Yeah, I like to uh, share some slides with you. And uh, I have uh, 12 slides uh, concentrating on the European situation and the standardization in this area. And then I have another 12 slides to talk about the German approach, which is very much adapted from the Dutch model and which share some experiences based on that, what we have said before. I think all the same and what you know in all parts of the world is that we have a threat and damage situation which is caused by two reasons. It's all, always a finding a pipeline next to another one because you have not sufficient information on site. And this uh, creates some worries uh, and you can evaluate this very clearly here based on German numbers. You see that we have a high amount of uh, of uh, disasters, we have a huge amount of money to spend even for compensation and rehabilitation. And in all cases, we have the, uh, the, the in the result, uh, uh, got to know afterwards that we have no right equipment used on site and we have not appropriate information about the data situation on site so that there needs to go something wrong. The anti-European working group, which has been formed by the Dutch initialization in 2004, is now including a lot of countries who have uh, found out that they have also the same problem. And uh, during the last years, they have started several approaches, even knowing that the infrastructure they need uh, is growing because new cable infrastructure is uh, built up everywhere. You have a lot of loop pipeline in the area where you have only not only to deal with one operator. And the future smart city needs a much higher uh, uh, safety on the on the uh, network assets in the underground. The Dutch example is well known, and therefore they are the leading part in this group. Where actually last week Spain and Singapore joined. And it's a very productive group and all the new coming parties are very nicely, uh, yeah, very nicely welcomed in this group. You see the Dutch model is uh, the best known, the well known, and it's formed after the Seveso catastrophe and the Fluxus disaster in 2004. They have this so-called Royal Act in place, which ob oblig obliged everybody in the country to use the portal to do a call before you dig uh, functionality and the operator have to answer within 48 hours. That means everybody who likes to do a construction in the Netherlands will have all adequate information within 48 hours and therefore the high degree of safety is, is given. And we like to compare in the discussion round of all these uh, countries, I give you four examples here, how different the diff approaches are and what parameters might be uh, interesting for you. You see, there is in nearly all cases a legislation demand given, not in France, not in Germany, not in Spain, but in the majority of the cases there is a legal demand and all the others are looking for such a legal obligation. And uh, in case you have it, it's possible to get fees for the request. In Germany, for example, and in France, it's forbidden because the operators are obliged to answer. Therefore, they have no chance to earn money on that process. And you see, based on the legal obligations, the response time is uh, might be very, very small. In the Netherlands, that uh, mentioned 48 hours, and in other times, it's four days. That's four to five days. That's fine. In Germany, for example, we have no obligation, and that, that means that it needs some fortnight to get the final answer. A question which comes up everywhere in the discussion, how to deal with the survey data, how to deal with the uh, Z-coordinate in the vertical overlapping uh, of, the, of the bottom. This is always a problem. It cannot be solved by the problems because the operators do not all know about uh, this parameter. On the other one hand side, we have a process. That process is everywhere the same because uh, all the parties and all the discussion members are agreed. You need to have a standard request with some uh, minimum information the construction party may give and the operator needs to get an appropriate answer. And the operators on the one hand side are only interested in relevant uh, uh, inquiries. They 
don't like to answer in areas where they are not operating. Therefore, a responsibility check is needed here in Germany to avoid a lot of unoperate uh, inquiries to the operator. In every case, he is responsible for giving the answer. He has to respond his local interference, and he is only the only party who may give map information. Therefore, that's a process, even in the in our German process, it, which uh, is only it can only be done by the operator itself. And uh, also the map information is something you cannot take from an official ground map. You have to add this by the land information of the operator. The last important step to archive all the, copy, the communication, all the delivered data, all the uh, status in that process is something which is archived in, in a system because in case of damage, you need to have some legal way to prove what has been done in the past. Therefore, that's a demand everywhere in the, in the European communities. A solution needs to be a portal solution. We talked about that at the beginning in, uh, in Rob's introduction. Uh, data portals are uh, feasible and they are on vogue in the moment. Uh, that is therefore needed because communication like that reduces a lot of individual transactions. And as I mentioned before, in all cases, we have a multi-dialogue with a lot of involved parties in place. Therefore, to make that lean, like we have done this in, uh, in some other uh, discussions when we uh, talk about uh, catastrophic uh, and supply interruption portals, it's all working the same manner. It has to deal in short term with a lot of operators and therefore a process like that has to be very lean. That's one challenge uh, to make that lean and to make this fast. Another uh, scope of work or requirement is coming from the construction industry. Some of you may know about something about the information, the building information modeling BIM process. It's also a European Committee of Standardization working on that. And you see there are some parameters asked for, like the involved parties, the classification, and of course the location where something is going on and when it is going on. And these are information which can easily taken from a proper inquiry, and this information is needed in several uh, process steps within the uh, BIM process. You see here the BIM circle with this six, four process steps, which are defined by the standardization committee, and you see how the inquiry process fits in in four places here in this case. And that's two examples of the demands coming everywhere in in the, in, the, in the European hemisphere, which is the same thing in each country and which is the frame for a continu continuing with a solution. I would like to share some slides now with you with the German approach. That German approach is in some kind different for a very simple reason, because as you may know, or otherwise I tell you, we have lots more of operators than one non-governmental organization in the country. We have that 40 pipeliners, we have that 800 multi-utility because each town has its own utility and we have that 11,400 public boards and a growing number of cable industry. And we found out and you see on the left hand side the pipeline operators, uh, the international pipeline operators acting in Germany they are all involved in our portal solution because they know from their from their home countries that something like that is feasible and makes sense to have it in Germany. But in Germany, we don't have that mentioned legal obligation. Therefore, we have to look, or the pipeline industry has looked for other challenges with other and other demands to make a portal attractive. Uh, we have in, uh, as you know, uh, a safety discussion for the digging request. We have a safety discussion as well for uh, safety of supply because of the German energy turnaround. And a lot of people under the uh, the audience may know about the cathodic interference of uh, high voltage transmission line and pipelines. And that's something which is nearly the same request for the to know where line information is needed. And therefore, we build up a specific reporting for that industry. When I talk about that we and who is doing that in Germany, we are 
organized as a cooperative. That means all pipeline operators joined it in Germany and founded a non-profit or, uh, or, uh, organization. That's needed because we like to have the support by all the associations. You won't get it when you are in a profit uh, organization. Therefore, we get all the uh, support by that organization so that we can implement something like a quasi legal way to oblige the construction into the, uh, industry to use the portal. On the three main topics uh, I have just mentioned, I like to uh, draw your focus to. The first one is the construction inquiry issue with the identification of the right operators. You see here in the middle, there is in the uh, right picture, a small construction site and the operators are invisible in, in the portal environment. And in case the uh, inquiry is sent, he gets to know that uh, there is a buffer circuit around that construction site because of criticality the operators have defined, and then they are more or less involved. That one is involved definitely, but we only recognize this because he is telling us with his corridor where he is interested to get this inquiry. That means we have an, a very small amount of data used by the operators. We only know about his interest area, then he gets the inquiry, and then he can answer in his process. And that operator, for example, left to the construction site, he won't get the inquiry, therefore he won't care about that, what's going on, and others may evaluate if this is uh, interesting for them or not. That's a simple process, which is uh, very feasible because you can imagine as a construct, as a pipeline operator, you will uh, lose more than 80% of your inquiries because there is no need to answer because you are definitely not involved in this construction activity. The second issue I talked about is the so-called span field analysis, which has at least the same functionality, but only for the demand of the high transmission overhead transmission line operators who like to know which corridors and which pipelines are in between of two mast positions. And it's the same procedure, only that they like to do it in a more lean uh, process because you can Imagine when you look to your country, there is more than one mass or more than two mass. We have 45,000 of that and the uh, analysis is done over a hundred of kilometers so that you have a thousands of requests. And for that issue, they need to have a very specific um, process and reporting to identify parallel routings along these uh, high voltage corridors. And this is part of the association framework to communicate with each other and the uh, build process is avoiding individual data exchange because they can easily identify which operators are involved in this uh, capacity increase of the uh, yeah high voltage transmission line operators and a very specific uh, thing we have also that's the third example with the cable industry who is which is growing rapidly in germany Therefore, they have the need to identify where customers are or a potential customers need to know where is a uh, connection line to the backbone carriers, for example, and they like to um, yeah, avoid uh, uh, construction sites so that they can uh, yeah, profit a little bit from others who have a, a, a cable in place so that uh, construction sites are not necessary and can be avoided so that the demand for uh, internet and fast communication is can be realized much faster. When we do all that, and you can imagine, uh, we have collected a lot of data within the five last years because we started collection and analyzing all our construction description and we are, uh, have set up a very specific reporting of that because we, we expected that this uh, knowledge about what happened in the underground is a knowledge for itself. That means the so-called build report we are always offering each year is not only offering a huge demand of inquiries which are growing over the years. You see that here very well. We have a very uh, prominent example uh, recognized some years, some weeks ago during the Easter time where the Corona COVID uh, influenza was uh, growing up in Germany. And we have had the uh, 
yeah, the the um, we thought that the, the the construction industry will go down. The opposite was the place. You can see here this little gap in this area. This is not the the uh, COVID uh, influence. This is Easter time and holiday time. And afterwards, you see here that the uh, that the uh, amount of inquiries grows up again. And when you can imagine this small information creates huge benefit and the construction press reports about that because we have given them this information. Obviously, this is interesting. And then you can imagine when you have such a huge demand of um, information, when you know about all that, when you know about 340,000 described constructions from 93 operators, then you know very well what's going on in the in the in the in the earth, and uh, you can deal with this information. You will know very well what's going on. That might be a value for the construction industry, and we share this information because we think this attracts the portal that creates uh, curiosity to the data, and this makes a lot of people uh, motivating to take part in the portal, either as a questionnaire and on the other hand as an operator to get this information. Actually, in Germany, we have a coverage with operators' uh, interest areas of nearly 80% eight, of all the communities. And we have a huge coverage in the large cities. In Cologne, for example, we have more than 13 operators, pipeline operators, uh, surrounding Cologne or running in this specific area so that uh, the uh, that you can't avoid to ask Bill to get uh, a construction allowance in that place. Uh, yeah. When we talk, and there are two slides left from my side to talk about the benefits of the operator on the one hand side and about the op the benefits of the construction industry. I like to start with the benefit of the operator. And here we have a well-known operator in Germany. It's the uh, old wind gas or gas gate transmission line operators passing the gas from Nord Stream to uh, BASF in the, in the southwest part of Germany or in other countries. And you see here there's the situation described about their inquiries they have got in 2015 before the bill start. And you see the inquiries they get colored in green they have received till 2019. And the picture is showing very clearly, and that's one of the questions I have answered in the panel discussions. It reduces the inquiries by more than 80% because in all these cases, Gascade is not responsibly, responsible to answer on that. And therefore, it increases very much and accelerates the answering process, and it reduces man work time to answer this in short term. And this is a very, uh, very attractive um, argument to uh, share the bill portal and to use it because the construction parties knows, know by using the bill portal, the answer will come easily and fast. And therefore, I'm on the operational side uh, with the construction industry industry, we could found out two major issues because, as you know, a uh, pipeline operator is not very happy when he got the inquiry a day before the construction part he likes to start. He likes to have that perhaps some days in advance so that he can react on that. And we have proven in the meantime that this education process is, uh, is growing, that the construction parties are willing to some to ask some days earlier to get the right answer. And on the other one hand side, the construction, we can prove that the construction side gets the answer much earlier. That means in the moment we have 57% of all answers delivered within 48 hours. That's fine for the moment. And we are on a nice way to go forward. That means that's after four weeks, four, four years of operation, a nice result. But I give you the good example. In the Netherlands, you have 100% of the uh, of the answers within 48 hours, and that's a lean process which can be done by this uh, kind of uh, portal use and by this kind of uh, yeah convincing the industry to deal with such tools and then to experience on that. 
That might be a question of age, as we discussed before. That might be a question of digitization uh, feasibility in this in these companies. We are going ahead with that, and uh, I'm quite happy to answer your question afterwards. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jens, for the presentation. Very interesting, and I, I think there are clear benefits of having a portal like that, especially one that ties in with other utilities. Uh, we do have a question come in from Barbara. Um, she says, do you think that uh, a dial before you dig system should become law? I guess we all know that third party damage is, is one of the leading causes of pipeline damage. Well, we are thinking about that if we are happy to have a, a, a law on that in Germany or not, because when we have a law, then the entire process of building up systems may become slower instead doing this by a private partnership like we have done this in the past. But of course, the, in, the construction industry and the safety demand of the operators, they like to have in the first step an obligation to ask the bill portal because then all the operators are safe because then they dedicate, they know definitely what's going on in their, in their surrounding area. And that would be fine for the participants of the bill portal. And all the others may recognize that the value of the data, the speeding of the process is a benefit, and then they may join. And finally, Microsoft is also introduced by the industry without law. Therefore, when we go forward with that, then I think we are faster than a legal obligation. Perfect, thank you. We're running slightly behind, so I just want to ask one more question. It's come in from Vikas. Um, he says, what are the possibilities of misuse of these pipeline location data by anti-establishment elements? Well, uh, we have a lot of uh, chance to use this data because uh, at first we only know about the interest area of the, of, of the operator and then we hand over this inquiry to the operator and he deals with the data in the way he likes to do it. Therefore, there's less influence by the portal. Is this answering the question? I think so. I think, um, you know, there's just a concern when a lot of data is present, then what if happens if that data falls into the wrong hands? Therefore, we have some uh, rules uh, because the operator is only willing to answer when the motivation of the inquiry is clear. Therefore, you have to describe in a proper way what he likes to do. And each operator is free to answer in his manner. And of course, he likes to avoid data because uh, he will only deliver data for the uh, uh, region described in the inquiry. And therefore, there is a huge amount of reduction of data, which is a data security problem. And we won't accept uh, inquiries like send me all data, I come on Monday and my my country is named uh, uh, Düsseldorf. Then you won't get an answer from the operator. Okay, good answer. Thank you, Jens. Uh, 